you. Okay, there you go. All right. Cool, but do you want to handle uh, the competition? Yeah, so what was the specific question? It was, it was during the presentation, it was noted that you have competitive advantages over the competition. Could you explain to us, please, what, what, who is your competition and why you feel you have a difference with a distinction? Perfect. Um, Dan, can you go to the value curve? Yep. So basically, uh, there's three main differentiators between our competition. Um, one is the collaborative aspect. Um, there's a lot of apps out there, but there's nothing that really builds a community between the users. And we feel that that social aspect is something that um, people want. Um, so a lot of your spending habits are influenced by the people around you. So by connecting these users, there's more of a sense of accountability as well as information out there. Uh, the second differentiator um, would be the gamification process. Um, that, that's also something that's not really out there. Um, what, what we're seeing on the market is primarily those, I guess, automated savers where, where they'll penny pitch or take you know, a, a certain margin out of what you're spending. But there's, there's nothing really gamified about it where um, you know, actions have either a consequence or re a reward or any kind of point system. And the third is just the overall business model. Um, a couple of our competitors out there as well have um, like management fees or subscription fees, where even for, let's say, a $5 um, you know, fee, that I, I think it takes like $5,000 just to break even. So that's not really a value add for customers. And we have a um, value curve here where you can kind of see the peer-to-peer, -peer where one is a social engagement, but also the peer-to-peer -peer financial interactions, right? So um, you know, donating to a common cause, or if you and a spouse or another individual want to have a group, uh, I guess, fundraiser for a shared goal. Um, that's something that um, we could accomplish, as well as the last mile partnership where we're connecting you to that last final step. Uh, and that's where the business model and that third differentiator is, um, which is where, um, say you have a car, or your goal is to get a car. Um, you have a specific timeline, you have, uh, I guess, a certain plan. And that's where our partnership with the third party, with whether it be a dealership or whether it be a manufacturer, where we're able to help connect the user closer to their goal, as well as the retailer or dealership closer to their end customer. Was that siren because somebody didn't save enough? I'm sorry? Was that siren because somebody didn't save enough? Was that no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think financially. for an app right now. Do you have, okay, tell, let's go through the competition a little bit more, if you don't mind, please. Perfect. Right. So th this, is, this would be an example of, of our competition. Um, digits out there, they, they basically automatically um, analyze your spending. And then they try to save as much as possible, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to achieve a goal. Right? It, I mean, if you're, if you're net negative with, with what you're spending, then this app is irrelevant. And they, they also have that, um, a fee structure to it. Because at the end of the day, for a lot of these apps, their users are their source of revenue. But for Collective, our source of revenue would be a, a third party, which would be like retailers or things that, um, I guess the, the, our users are looking to um, achieve. How do you how do you personalize this to an individual's needs through what mechanisms? Cool, perfect. So we can go ahead and um, do you want to bring up the roadmap? Yeah, because I think that speaks a little bit more towards the product, right? It's 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 still more competition, but that's okay. Whatever you feel most comfortable talking about, we won't we won't call the siren on you. <laughs> Wait, so can you can you uh, clarify your question? Yeah. Let, let me let me frame it from a different point of view. There are, there are other competitors that you haven't noticed that you haven't noted, and they've raised a lot of money, and they and they're very specific about what the needs of the individual are. They identify it pre, post, and during the relationship, and so they expand it. What I'm trying to understand is, I understand how you actually entice people. 
the real question I'm, try, I'm trying to understand is, what, are you a marketing company? Are you a savings company? And, or are you a financial planning company? It seems to me that the way you've positioned this, because you haven't really talked about how the tools um, manifest in helping an individual more on how you're going to go do it, it seems to be more of a marketing company than actually that of a product company. And that's what I'm not trying to understand. Right. Does that, does that help? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because I, I feel like um, I could have gone on a tangent there. So it's definitely more of, from a, from a revenue stream standpoint, it is, um, I guess, like a marketing company. And that's where our revenue would come from. And that, that's where one of our key differentiators are, where our user is our, is our source of data, right? And, and that, that is the value for our end customer, right? So I guess a key thing to differentiate is between users and customers. So, right. right? So the value to the user is the peer-to-peer -peer interactions or the community, the gamification, and then that last mile connecting you to your end goal. Mm -hmm. and, and the value to our actual customer, our revenue stream would be the marketing, whether you want to call it, you know, affiliate marketing, referral based, um, more targeted, um, you know, I guess advertisements. These are something that we've, we've vetted through with, um, you know, a couple agencies uh, and it seems to have a, a decent amount of traction. And just to touch upon the competitor, because I think that's what you're really looking for, right? What, what makes us well, different? It's more, it's more than that. I, what I'm really trying to identify, are you a B2B or B2C model? Perfect. Yeah, so <laughs> the way we phrased it before was a B to B to C. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where, so B2B would be, would be the, the main answer for revenue. You understand what the cost is to, to, uh, to market this in, in the B, on, the B2B, on the B2C side, how expensive it is. It can cost up to 25 million bucks to go glean customers, right? You, rec you recognize that? Uh, we recognize it's going to be pretty expensive to get going, but I think we have a pretty good bootstrap um, testing model to see if it can gain traction before we go and actually try to raise VC funding and even go to get seed funding. Um, and I think also to maybe answer your questions, there are some competitors in this space, but they're kind of focused on different things. You might be thinking of Acorns or Robinhood, where they're more focused on people that are interested in investing. When we did our market research, we found a lot of younger consumers don't even care about investing. In fact, they would never bring it up. What mattered to them was just purely saving and having money specific to something they want to achieve. No, I get it. I, 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 yeah, no, I, I understand. I've, I've looked at like models before, which is why I'm asking some of these questions. Yeah, I don't think Acorn, I mean, Acorn is a little bit different than what you are as well. They're more of a crowdfunding keep, uh, source. So yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Okay. Um, could you could you go over the could you uh, Corey? Do you I, I've been talking. Do you want to go start, Corey, or Corey? You there? Yes, uh, I actually have a quick question on your on the appendix slide of the value curve. Where did your data source come from? From the attractiveness of offering on the left hand side there. Yeah, so a lot of that came from the iCorps program, as well as other surveys we we put out. You might want to reference the data source at some point in time. And then very quickly on your Tam Sam and uh, some slide, always nice to have, keep in mind the perspective of the judges is that we are in a room for 12 hours, 10 or 12 hours. And the easier it is for us to assess uh, and process data, uh, the easier it is. So we've always found that, uh, this is a very rudimentary comment, but a large oblong with a medium sized oblong with a smaller oblong, you know, um, because I, I, I'm, I, 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 I have the, uh, the fortune of listening to investors pitch every single day. And I find myself struggling with trying to um, read and understand in context what I'm reading, what, what the data is. So uh, bullet points are, are awesome, but uh, uh, great, great job. Um, you're, you're, you're telling a story in a narrative, right? It's a storyboard. And um, take a look at each of these slides and ask yourself, does each, does each slide can each slide stand on its own and telling a story? And does it segue and introduce the next chapter, if that makes sense? But those are really my only comments. Great job, guys. Perfect. Let's, let's, can, um, I, can I look at the financials again? Yeah, so we're running out of time here, but last comments for judges, and we'll have to say goodbye to this team.
Okay, very Thank good. Thank you. Yeah, here are the financials. Um, I don't know what specific questions you might have, um, but this is basically how we came up with our income statement and our usage of cash. What I'm trying to see is how much you're looking, uh, how much you're looking to generate, or how much is required from a usage standpoint to uh, reach the customers. That's what I'm trying to get a feel for. I'm gonna get the customer acquisition. At uh, first, we're gonna, you know, hopefully win NBC, and then we have a founder um, equity round that we're gonna put money in, and then we're gonna try to get our friends and family in year one. And really, that's gonna be to develop an MVP and try to get um, companies on board and really see if there's going to be any traction um, with our user set before we really go and try to um, go full in and try to get equity funding for this program. Uh, we really just want to like test and we think we have actually an opportunity to do so in the organic growth model that we've kind of laid out. Um, we have Selva on the team that has uh, past experience in developing apps and I think he can get an MVP ready for us and then we can try to market that and get that in front of potential users to see what's working, what's not, and where we can make changes. And there's actually opportunities to test it in a free environment with uh, transferring funds. And that's gonna be the beta testing thing that we're gonna do in our pre-launch uh, trial. Are your product rollout numbers for 2020, 2500, the same as your, what's on here on the financials? I thought I saw uh, 35 after beta. And here in 2020, I'm seeing 2,500 active users. Um, well, 2020 is year zero. So I'm not Got sure it. what number you're seeing on the slide. I'd have to go back and revisit it. Got but it. Okay. Uh, 2,500 is like the wait list that we're trying to build up. And got then it. we employed a 20% growth rate. And then okay. we got the ones that would drop off. And that's how we got that number. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Church, for your comments and feedback. So, team, you can go ahead and leave this meeting and um, your recording will be on um, Dan's um, computer. All right, thank you everybody for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you gentlemen. Thank you.